So now we're going to talk about the three levels of techniques in mindfulness. So the first one is our concentration techniques. Concentration practices. Techniques with the purpose of building up concentration in the individual and to start training the two components of awareness and acceptance in a controlled manner by bringing attention not to everything that is going on inside of oneself because it can be very painful in the beginning if a person is going through a lot of psychological distress but by bringing the attention to something more concrete like one's breath, body sensations or the counting of numbers, things of the sort that are very concrete. And I think this concept of working with concentration in this way is better exemplified by the Kashmir Shaivism term of Anabhopaya, or the path of the individual. In a sense that I, the individual, am bringing my attention to concrete phenomena such as my breath. Yeah, me and breath. And Kashmir Shaivism is an ancient form of yoga from the north of India that we'll be discussing in future videos. The second set of techniques in mindfulness are love and kindness practices. And these techniques serve the purpose to further concentration, awareness, and acceptance, just like the previous techniques, but with the added bonus of helping the practitioner or client experience love and compassion towards oneself and ultimately to all sentient beings. Love and kindness practices also work by helping the client realize how having an ethical life is beneficial since they get to experience how love feels in a way that is not easily felt without a meditation practice. Because the practitioner can start to feel these amazing states of ecstasy and unconditional love that they cannot but feel the drive to share them and will other people to have those same experiences. And a lot of research has been done on this type of love and kindness meditation and how it develops our prefrontal left side of our cortex. And these techniques are closely associated with, with, with the Kashmir Shaivism path of Shaktopaya, or the path of energy. And the third level of mindfulness techniques are the archetypical mindfulness practices. And this set of techniques is comprised of only one sole thing, or one sole concept which relates to be aware of what is. Awareness of what is happening in the present moment, as exemplified by the sky analogy. The previous two sets of techniques paved the way for the client or practitioner to plunge into this third of techniques, since by then the student will have better concentration, awareness and acceptance of what is. This technique is associated with Kashmir Shaivism's Shambhavopaya, the path of consciousness. In a way, this mindfulness technique is the simplest thing we could ever do. It entails just resting as awareness, as opposed to fighting what is, which is actually more tiresome. But because of the way we've been, we have lived our lives, always trying to change things and accomplish this and that, then just simply being and resting can be very difficult. For instance, though, in Kashmir Shaivism, as we, the tradition we discussed before, instead of people starting with Anabhopaya, or the path of the individual, people start with Shambhavopaya, or the path of consciousness. So students are taught pure mindfulness at the beginning, and if that's too hard for the student, then they teach them Shaktopaya, the path of energy, and they help them to start um, doing practices that relate to love and kindness and their chakras and different levels of energy and consciousness. And then if they're ready, then they jump again to my pure mindfulness. But if they can't, then they go to the base level of concentration techniques of, of Anabhopaya. So from Kashmir Shaivism, they start from the top down. So they start with my pure mindfulness. If that doesn't work, they go for energy techniques, and if that doesn't work, with concentration techniques. And then they make themselves their way up. Just in mindfulness, it's much more common to start from the bottom up. And mindfulness acknowledges that putting this practice and framework in practice is hard. It's hard work. The client has to strive for this, the same way as if he or she wanted to learn how to play the guitar, or do exercise, or run. The amount of effort the client puts in will also pay back in a similar way. Would the client want to be a casual runner 
a world champion, it will really be up to the client or student to decide, since mindfulness practice can take the client not just to psychological normality, but to psychological emancipation and profound mystical experiences, since mindfulness has been taken out of a mystical path, Buddhism.